Hot El Baltimore gets its name because it's really set in the Hotel Baltimore, but the Hotel Baltimore is an old classic hotel, fictional, but it's supposed to be an old classic hotel in Baltimore that has gone to seed and it's Hot L because the E in the sign out front has burned out and nobody has the time or the money to replace it. Hot L Baltimore is really like a cross section of American life and it's basically American life among the have-nots. Renee Chahoy, I'm a senior. No, I've never auditioned before with GSU, but I'm real excited. I did um, Off-Broadway in New York City, um, I guess about eight or ten years ago. I did um, a one act called um, The People vs. Betty Smith, and I did um, Summer Tree, and I um, can't exactly remember the last one that I did but three plays. Yeah, I hadn't done it in a long time, so this is um, really good for me. I'm Lee. I'm Lee, and uh, I go to, oh, and I'm a senior. Sorry. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> I have. Um, I've, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I've been in all of the shows here for the past three years, all the main stage shows. It's nerve wracking. It doesn't matter how many times you do it. Give it your all, you know, you have a minute to do a monologue, milk those lines for all it's worth. It's as easy as that. Um, when you go into an audition, you're never confident. <laughs> I think whenever you're confident, uh, that's usually a bad sign. <laughs> now I find that they're doing um, shorter monologues. Um, we actually did a one minute and I can remember we would do like a three or four minute monologue, so it has changed a little bit. Just do it. Um, just be like a Nike chick. Just, <laughs> just do it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of cool people. Hi, my name is Andre Eaton. Uh, I'm a senior here at Georgia State. I've been in, I want to say, five or six plays here. Yeah, quite a few. I do. I don't think I... I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing, honestly. And when I'm not in a show, I have, like, withdrawal symptoms. It's kind of, yeah, bad. <laughs> Out of the whole, like, acting process itself, auditions, I think, are the thing that I'm most nervous about and I hate the most, I guess. Um, the hardest thing, I guess, would be is staying in the moment on stage during audition even if you, you know you mess up your words or you forget stuff um just to, uh, re remembering to stay in character and not you know completely blank out and just you know stare randomly i think that's the hardest part yeah well you've got to jam pack in um a lot in one minute so that the director can really see you know what you can do and one minute's not a whole lot of time so you've got to be pretty good <laughs> I hope so I'm not really sure but I hope I did a good job my name is Kiasha Birch I am a graduating senior this semester yeah <laughs> I am. I am a theater performance major. Uh, here at Georgia State, uh, I'm currently involved with my third production. Yes. Um, I think it's a very fair process. I think that it's exciting that a lot of people come out, and I, I like the competition. I like knowing that I beat everyone else. Does that sound super narcissistic? Yes, it does, but that's okay. I prepared a monologue. Uh, it's actually one that's kind of in my monologue bank. I have several. And um, I just practiced it a few times, tr tried to engage with the character and make it the best monologue I can possibly make it. Watch out. No. <laughs> just go in there, show them that you're not afraid to make bold choices, uh, articulate, and don't be afraid to move. I think people get a little scared and they don't realize that their movements aren't coming across. We're in theater. We have to be big. So that's what I would say. Go big or go home. 
Hello, my name is Daniel Sandler, but I go by Sandler. Sandler, like Adam, but without the bad acting. I don't know. I haven't auditioned yet. I feel pretty confident about my monologue piece, but um, an audition piece. So I feel like I should do well, but you know, it could go either way. I could get like stage fright or something and just like freeze up. Not just any hospital, Grady Memorial Hospital. My mom just had her name Okay, well, that's cool. Grady Memorial Hospital. I'm naming all of my children male Pokemon. That would be hot. Enough, they're already here. C-O-D-Y. I am not Pokemon. Hello, my name is Anna Michelle Tucker, and I am a senior here at Georgia State. I am, yes, performance focus. So I was in um, Titus Andronicus in the ensemble of that show. And then I was in Neil Simon's Rumors, which we did not last spring, but spring before last. And then last spring, I was in Cloud Nine, which was a blast. So I've actually been um, acting since I was in elementary school, but I got really heavily into it in um, high school. I'm confident because I'm prepared and I'm excited. And you know, there's always that little bit of nervousness, but I'm more than anything just excited. Uh, hi, my name is Sean Bishop. Sean Bishop? Yes, Sean Bishop. GSU? I am a sophomore here at GSU. All right. Yes. Uh, it, it went okay. I uh, I read one of the the uh, the sides they had here. I didn't have a monologue beforehand. Regret it. I regret that, but so, did what I could. So read the play that you're auditioning for. Um, cause then, then you should pick a monologue and if you read the play, you kind of get an idea of who you want to be in the play and then you can pick a monologue, you know, that goes along with that. So have a monologue too. Yeah, definitely. Yes. This was my third audition here at GSU. It's for every man, the first show I did, actually, I wasn't too nervous. Um, for Cloud9, I was more nervous because I really, really wanted to be in it, like really bad, because I loved the play, and I wanted to work with the director, Dr. Miller, who's awesome. Um, and there were only like a few parts for guys, so that one was a little more nerve-wracking. I mean, I prepared like crazy for that, but I was that was probably the most nervous I've been. This one, not so much, because I think... The directors, it's Dr. Miller again, so he's seen me act before. So I feel a little less nervous about that. I'm a theater major here, so I, you know, before I came to the school, I looked up the theater department websites. The GSU players have their own website, and I found out about the Everyman audition, which was my first audition that way. And then, you know, I hang around the theater all the time, so I just, I just know when it's going to happen. If you want to get into acting, just audition for everything you possibly can and if you want to get better at acting there should literally never be a moment in your life where you're not acting I mean in real life you know be a real person I'm just being a lot of stuff do a lot of stuff just don't stop doing stuff ever And then I was talking to Andre for a second, and just mid-conversation, I go, she's right. She's, she's right. This, this play you. demands a very, almost a textbook approach to realism. They have to get totally inside the character. At first rehearsal, I asked them all to write bios of their characters so that they'd have a sense of who they were and where they came from and where they were going. Um, all of our work has been what does your character do now? What would you do in this situation? Try this, try that. But trying to get them deeper into who the people are. Uh, my name is Sean Bishop and I am playing the role of Jamie in the Hot El Baltimore. My name is Andre Eaton and I play Mr. Katz in the Hot El Baltimore. My name is Anna Michelle Tucker and I will be playing the character of Jackie in Hot El Baltimore. Um, the cool thing about this show 
And it was kind of the same thing with Cloud9, was that it's really an ensemble show. There's no real leading part, so everyone, Probably. everyone's yeah. character kind of just adds up to make what the show is. You know, there's no emphasis on any one person. I mean, Hot El Baltimore is straight up realism as well, whereas the past shows I've done here, Every Man and Cloud9 were definitely not realistic at all. I think what makes it the re most realistic show is that the show is about not necessarily a plot line, but it's you know, it's about uh, the characters and, you know, where they come from and, you know, their experiences uh, and how they conflict with the other characters and their fight for their dreams and stuff like that. Which in the show there's, you know, you don't have your normal character arcs, you don't have your normal, you know, climaxes and things like that, but you do have these beautiful little excerpts of people's lives. I think the message of this play is that survival is the key. No matter how bad it looks, we can find a way to survive and that sometimes survival can mean embracing the past, sometimes it means embracing your gifts. If nothing else, it just means find what you can find joy in at this point. The play ends very simply. The, the older hooker, April, grabs hold of a young man whose sister has deserted him, who's got no certain future, and just says, come on, we're gonna dance, turn up the radio, and they dance. And it's that in the midst of this hotel that's about to be torn down with these people who have no future, to speak of as we can see it. They still survive, they still find the joy in life. I like that it doesn't really have a plot because it, it just reading it, you know, you see the life of these characters and all the interactions and you still see, you know, their dreams and what they do to survive, which is really what the play is about. Dr. Miller was talking about the play in three different sections that mark the acts of, you know, lost dreams and survival and just as soon as I heard that the whole play just kind of clicked with me. And it's really just a beautiful show. I know the girl, the character, has a line about um, nobody having the convictions to act on their passions. And when I first read the script that line just really stood out to me and just I love that line. And if nothing else that line to me just makes the whole show. The play when I first read it was it was a strange experience first reading it because reading it there's so much going on all the time on top of each other and when I first read it I was just looking for a basic plot. There's a lot of really cool stuff that Lanford Wilson put into that like the characters talk all over each other like when you're reading it you're, you know everyone's like how are we gonna do this but you know seeing that it's very very cool very cool. One of the biggest challenges is that he's written this the way people talk. So people are constantly interrupting each other, talking over each other, and at one point at the end of the first act, there are three arguments going on at once, and another person comes in and starts screaming. And as actors, first they have to get used to talking at the same time as somebody else, because we're so used to plays where I speak, you speak, I speak, you speak. You know, that's the standard way it's written. And then when it gets to two or more conversations going at once, trying to listen for cues is a real challenge. So at the end of the first act, we've got three arguments going on at once. They're really loud, and there are two people off stage waiting for the line that brings them on stage. And that's going to make for some long nights in the week ahead before we get into tech rehearsal, because we've got to have that set before we do lights and sound. And if it works, it's going to be dynamite. And if it doesn't work, it's going to be slop. The process of developing my character is, I mean, I first come at it just looking through the script and seeing, you know, his relation, I guess, guessing his relationships with the other characters, because there's not a lot about Mr. Katz in relationship to the other characters in the script. And so I kind of, you know, made them up myself. Who uh, I figured out, you know, who I liked, who I didn't like, and went through there. And a lot of that also came through, you know, the working rehearsals and working with the other actors and feeding off of how they felt, how they felt their characters interacted with Mr. Katz. And I just, you know, fed off of that. Developing the character of Jackie, that was a fun experience because she's completely different from me, completely. And um, so there was a lot of work. Um, creating her physical body and physicalization. I worked with um, Dr. Keith Timms, who's really great with, you know, building bodies of characters. So I met with him and worked to create Jackie's more masculine sort of movements and things. And then a lot of it just came with, as to her personality and such, came with 
fleshing out details of her past with Dr. Miller, um, talking about motives. Um, and then Sean Bishop and I actually had a lot of fun just like sitting down and being like, so what happened to us when we were kids? You know, our characters since Sean plays my brother. And that was fun, you know, just fleshing out the details. And it was really just the main key to her was figuring out her motives and what drives her. And once we got those in place and got the physical body, she just kind of came together. <laughs> as soon as I get cast, I read the script and I analyze the script. You know, I look for all of my characters, you know, goals, really. I just find out, really, I just find out what he's doing in every scene. So once I figure out what he's trying to do in every scene, I can just work off of that and play that. Jackie. Jackie is driven. She is determined to get what she wants. And she wants to be in control of everything in her life. Her past was really relatively dark. Um, and just she had such little control over things that she's just determined to have control, get what she wants. She will do anything to get it. She's very straightforward. She doesn't, you know, beat around the bush or try and be sneaky. She'll just, you know, scream at you in the face if she wants you to do something. Um, but deep down, even though she comes off very, very harsh and very intense, she really does have a good heart and she really just wants to do what she thinks is best for her and her brother. Jamie is the little brother of Jackie, who's a pretty loud-mouthed girl in the play. And uh, he's really, he doesn't really have any connections with anyone there. He's kind of just, you know, following his sister around like a lost puppy, really, for most of the show. But... You know, as the show goes on, I kind of develop a, some relationships with some of the characters. Like, and it's really like, I think everyone kind of pities me, and that's the only time I get to get close to people. Is going to go, oh, you're you're so sweet, oh, and they'll be like, thanks for caring, you know. And uh, I mean, April and I, towards the end of the play, I have some cool interactions with Millie. Uh, Mr. Morse and I do not get along, apparently, because I keep beating him at checkers and he just can't get over the fact that I'm better than him. But, uh, I mean, really, Jamie really just, just keeps to himself. Okay, well, when rehearsal started, we all started with just a general read through, and then from there we went to um, yeah, table work. We went on to working the scenes. <laughs> And then we got into run-throughs and, you know, throughout the working and run-through process, every day we have new props or new parts of the set. And so it's very exciting coming to rehearsal each day with that. Um, my name is Casey Williams and I'm Master Electrician for Hot L Baltimore. I'm Dylan Phillips, Lighting Designer for Hot L Baltimore. I had no electricians. None. I. <laughs> We get three days to do our job. Uh, <laughs> everyone else gets pretty much the entire thing to, you know, set gets, you know, weeks to work on their stuff. Actors, they get weeks to rehearse. Uh, once the lighting design, you know, he has to, first he has to wait for other people to put their stuff in to really finish his plans. My lighting design process typically begins with, I mean, it's the first meeting. You read the script twice, go to the first meeting with the director, the director tells you concept, and then you read it about three more times, and you begin slowly getting in information from the other designers, like the ground plan from the scenic designer, and then the model from the scenic designer, costume renderings from the costume designer, and like the stuff you get from the scenic designer determines where your lights are hung. The costume designer, her renderings sort of determine how colors work, and then sound designer determines pace. So you're very submissive as a lighting designer. And throughout this process, I've attended, I'd say, half of the rehearsals, probably less. And then, like, during the attendance of rehearsals, you start doing arrow plots and things to get your ideas down on paper and then you generate this pretty large piece of paper that is a light plot. Time. Time is my enemy 
when it comes time for us to set it all up, we only get three days. We get one kind of short day to prep everything, one day to actually hang all of the instruments, and then a third day to focus them, get them where, pointed where we want, uh, get the light as soft as we want, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when I show up to those three days, three three days that we get, and I have zero electricians for what was it, what was it, 87 instruments. We get there and there's no one. It, I, we actually had for one day we had two carpenters. Um, lights got hung upside down. Uh, just wrong gels. Uh, it, the third day, focus, zero electricians. So the reason there were no electricians, or the reason there were no carpenters on the third day, is all right, I get there, Dylan is there, he was nice, he brought, he brought in some donuts. Dunkin' Donuts, I love Dunkin' Donuts, it put me in a good mood. And he tells me that there are no there's no electricians or carpenters or anybody there to help us. And so we're both sitting there really confused, wondering where people are. And we call the one guy that was supposed to be there, who's being paid to be there. We, we call him, and he says, oh, I can't come in, I'm at the vet's office right now. Like, what? 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 Why? Oh, my dog ate a tuna can. What? <laughs> like, why didn't... All right, one, how did that happen? And two, like, why didn't you call us? You know, let us know you're not going to come in. And three, how did your dog eat a tuna can? <laughs> I want to ask anyone that sees this why you weren't here on Hanging Focus for Lighting. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's pretty nerve-wracking because... You never know what's gonna, how the audience is going to respond to a show, um, especially a show that's so based in realism. Um, it's supposed to be funny, and hopefully we are. <laughs> but uh, it'll, and I and I think we are. I, I think this is going to be a, a pretty good success for Georgia State. Um, but it is, it's always nerve wracking at this point. Usually, opening night I feel like are our best audiences, so I'm hoping we get a lot of laughs. I don't think I'm nervous about a particular scene, and I don't tend to get really nervous until right before I go on stage. But other than that, I'm, I think I'm pretty, pretty good with this one. It should, this play, all of our, all of our run-throughs so far have gone on pretty much hitchless. So I, I think that opening night will be great. I expect it to be a lot of fun because it's a fun show and a tremendous cast, and I've had a great time and. Frank is a delight to work with. I mean, we've worked really hard, so I feel like it's gonna go really well, really smoothly. We've all put in 110%, and we've just been like nailing it every single time we do it, so I mean, it's gonna go great. Well, I'm hoping that we have a great turnout, and I think we're ready to go. We've rehearsed a lot, so we ought to be um, in good shape there, and I think we're all very excited, too, and the play is just a lot of fun. I just expect it to be really good. Um, I'm really excited. We've worked really hard every day, 7 o'clock, always at practice, working really hard. We even worked on a Sunday, Saturday, and a Fridays all the time. Um, I'm just really expecting it to be an awesome play, and I'm expecting to hear really good feedback from people who see it. Um, well, I expect there to be, opening night has the most people usually, but uh, I don't know. I, th I think everyone's ready to do the show, so I'm just hoping for a good show. I mean, it's probably going to be the fullest house we get. And depending on how many intro to theater students are there, it'll probably be good. So. I'm Pamela. Um, I'm in Dr. Tim's intro to theater class. I'm here to see Hot L Baltimore tonight for a test, but also um, we've seen a scene today in class, and it looked pretty interesting. So I'm just here to see what else they're gonna do. Pretty excited about it. You can't tell it in the face, but I'm excited. <laughs> I saw a short scene of them playing checkers, so like it seems like it's gonna be really interesting. Like I have no idea what it's about though. <laughs>
I'm expecting a really good performance by the entire cast. I'm looking forward to seeing the play, and I hope it is really fun. <laughs> My expectations, I'm expecting to see a great play. We saw a scene from it in class, and the scene was really funny. Um, I'm expecting to see a good show. I hope that they will enjoy the laughs and maybe in a few places talk back in the good way. There, there's one place where two of the prostitutes start calling each other out and I will be very upset if somebody doesn't respond vocally with more than laughter. Um, I certainly hope so and I, I hope that they're moved at the end and I know that we'll have one performance when we'll think they painted the audience on the chairs. <laughs>